Well, hello and welcome to All My Art and Soul. Uh, I'm Michelle Holden, the artist behind this channel, and I am finally carving out some time for some more Exploring Color series, as I said earlier in my previous videos. So what, I, what you see here is um, Cadmium Red Deep, um, Yellow Ochre, and cerulean blue with black and white. That's it. I was so surprised, pleasantly surprised as to all of the colors I could make. So I don't, I don't put them around in a certain way and I'm all fussy. As I said before, I like to use um, how I would paint a painting. Um, and I didn't really overthink anything. I just wanted to start mixing and start exploring. The mauves, the pinks, the earthy oranges, the dark blues, and these beautiful neutral uh, sages, which you don't see yet. But when you mix the cerulean with the ochre, and I just thought, you know, um, I don't know if this kind of content is of any use to you, but it was to me in how you just put the colors beside each other, you're still using your instincts. That's black that I'm putting just because I wanted to use, uh, put a big uh, black rectangle there to see what those colors would look over black versus white. So, you know, you have the white of the paper that reflects the light and really shows up your colors. And you can really escape and have so much fun. That one right there, beautiful. Ochre and white. And then with a little of the red. And just trying to get those different subtle um, hues and values of your color. So um, in a moment, you will see uh, me do an abstract journaling page, which is exploring this palette. And right here, I'm, uh, I'm just sort of chatting. Um, and, I, and I think I want to do these things live these at least these segments without doing a voiceover it's just it's very disconnected and um, I like to just talk about things while I'm doing it with with this kind of um, um, what would you say uh, painting session and um, I think it just would be more useful so I'm gonna I'm gonna try and do that uh, ahead of time so it's going to I'm gonna finish this up and I think I just let it dry. And then in a moment, I'm going to start my page. So as you can see, my glasses, my hair, my nose, and I'm talking to you, but I have eliminated that voice because it, um, I wanted to speed this up. So on the, on the other page opposite of all those color squares, I've written a lot of notes and I'm glad I did because I was so busy with my other work, as I've told you, teaching and all of that. And um, I can become disconnected as to what my page and what I started and what my intention was. So I wrote a ton of notes down. So you'll hear some pages turning as I finish this up. So I'll just let you watch some beautiful colors. Oh. That one was so gorgeous. And that was um, a small amount of, of cerulean with a touch of the red, the cad red deep. And it just made that, just that beautiful blue. And as you can see now, I'm finishing up because there's no more room, sort of like a sage. I really like, it's a light blue sage. And that's what I do. I just, oh just in case I forget, and I write um, 2030 or 5050 uh, with white. So you can refer to these. And then you can see, in looking at all the abstract journaling pages in that little section, uh, at least that's how I organize them. And maybe I should just do some short videos explaining, read my notes, and how I'm practicing and developing my, my work and my process. So I'm putting in the cad red, the cerulean blue, and the yellow ochre, just straight 
just to see the effects on black. Um, and then we will get started on the abstract journaling page. Oh, I just added a little white. I wasn't happy with that. So on this abstract journaling page, I just started, um, I'm going to start with a very atmospheric, um, mixed, undefined um, background. And then it becomes more structured as I go. I was rather shocked at what I what my choices were and my intention and I just jumped in. So there it is. And there's so many more colors. So again, the page is nine by 12 and it's an eight by 10 taped off with the edges. Here are the colors by Liquitex. I really love the mauves because I'm experimenting with darks and oh, it's just incredible. So let's just see what I do first. I choose a brush and of course I have my paints out. And sometimes, you know, when you just don't know what to do first, you do the first thing that comes to your mind. And I just choose to mix things right on the page. So I just, I just wanted to start something new. Um, so I'm taking some CAD red and I'm just moving it around, really getting used to these bright, rich colors. They're so powerful. It's amazing. And some ochre. And I'm thinking of, in the back of my mind, of course, I'm not really overthinking. I'm just sitting back being a witness as to what's happening here with the texture. And then I just put straight blue in that lower corner. And I know, I, I know now, probably didn't know as much as I do now because it's hindsight. But I loved what began to happen with the blue and the red and the mauve. You can warm it up. And then I just started putting changing and adjusting the values around and I realize it's just wow this is just flat and I've been trying to move away from starting sort of a landscape format at the beginning and this certainly did because I wanted to stay away from all of that horizon line kind of structure so then of course the brayer, if you want to just take away some of the brush strokes and let things happen, spread that paint around, which also helps it dry, especially um, uh, before adding the next layer. So I'm just going to turn my page right now and I'm just going to read some of the notes. So the first layer, it was very unclear. And I just applied all three colors with white. I remembered to start changing values in random areas to begin some kind of shapes. Yes, I'm so glad I wrote these notes. It's a full page of notes. And because I don't want to overthink shape. Shape to me is so, I don't know. I If I start with a shape that I want to try, it just never turns out. It's so overly, I don't even know the words, too contrived. And I like shapes to just happen on their own. So that's what I like and that's what I'm experimenting with. So there's beautiful violet and mauve going to happen here and it gets quite dark. But when I add the black, this is the lighter of the values and uh, of the darker values and it's really cool. So there's a beautiful mauve and it's, these are all soft edged. They're not really shapes yet, but they're different areas. So things are starting to happen. And of course I left, you don't see my, my stencil paper. I should have started with showing you what my choices were, but I'll remember to do that next time. So this is the uh, a tracing paper. 
um, with pinky orangey acrylic on it dabbed with a brush and I have been dying to get this on some some work and I love how transparent the paper is so and this paper is a lot stiffer and especially if you want to use it on large canvases which I definitely am going to use this so I need to get some more supply and I need to make specific collage for specific paintings with specific palettes. I know that was a lot of specific, but you know, hey, that's, that's how I roll. This is what we're doing. And finally it's dry and I'm going, whoa, what did I just do? So let's see, sort of the middle area. I go middle right or middle left. Now that's straight yellow ochre, but I like how it's rather thin. I could have added some medium fluid to that, but then as you can see, I'm lightening up that top, but I'm only going in certain areas because I want it overlap. And when you overlap, that's when some really interesting shapes can just uh, happen on their own. Loving the ochre with the mauve and then now I'm scumbling with the brush and I'll probably do some scouring with it. And now, um, you know, being away from my, from the work, I can see the quadrants. Can you see those quadrants? You have an upper reddish with a little purple, the right large ochre quadrant, lower mauve, and then the darker, darker purple in the bottom. So this really helps compositionally. So I'm having fun with now a blue. I'm not really discovering or paying attention to those quadrants right now. It doesn't matter because it's so early on in the layers. So it's, a, it's, it's too blue to me, but let's see what happens. Okay. So it's just a dark, rather organic, rectangular, somewhat rectangular shape. So then I put some at the top, just to help it, help that, uh, putting some darks around. So you would say there's mostly medium value there and now there's some darks, so we will need light. And for this one, I use collage for the light. The collage pieces that I like to choose are, of course, uh, neutrals with similar colors in them, maybe some reds and pinks, and I like to contrast with some of those in subtle ways. So, oh yeah, it makes the most amazing pink, and that was a good place to put it. So now structure starting to come on in. And notice um, the areas that I'm putting red in are more close to the previous layers underneath, except for that red up top. I think I add a little more ochre. So I'm adding a little more ochre the further I go into that ochre area, just so the values are, uh, the contrast is less and it's more subtle. Okay, making some violet up there. And I know uh, since I use a glass palette, it can be very reflective um, when you're trying to see color mixing. That's sort of tricky. But I think my lighting is pretty good. Let me know. Um, I do have some studio lights and I'm going to be setting up this weekend. 
Uh, well, no, I can't. I have to wait until the reno, the reno is finished. But March break, I'll be uh, reorganizing the studio, putting a large canvas area with studio lights. So we're going to be changing it up. I can't wait. Oh, yeah. So if you're not really sure, you either have a light on a dark or a dark on a light. Scratch through it. And you can even use a palette knife. You can even scrape some away if you if you don't like it. And then just leave it. Because that'll be a beautiful texture for maybe some other paint that you put on top um, that you will like. So, um... Oh yeah, I call it the pink dabbled collage, and that's there, ready to go. I just needed a little more darks and lights, and I'm starting to enjoy, uh, well, I always enjoyed it. That's probably not the right word. I'm starting to become more comfortable with um, putting, knowing how to put the colors around the substrate. And then I'm going in with these marks. I'm not sure if I like them, but I just needed to do something different. So another difference. Yes, much better that I change the value of them. So I like dark on light, light on dark. If they're going across in a slightly downward motion or, you know, you're creating movement that way. What else? Oh, yes. So next, I'm just telling you what's next because I have notes. And of course, I have my, I have the work right here. Um, I finally got to use the most interesting piece of collage made with the same paper. It's the, it's the tracing paper. I like it because it's transparent. It really holds up to a lot of uh, rubbing of the medium across it. And you can really get the bubbles out without worrying about tearing it. Unlike the deli wrap, which is so delicate. At least this brand. I know that uh, some of you, and thank you, there it is. There's that piece. I went and finally found them. Um, I forget what it was. I think, it. yeah, it's a special drawing tracing paper. That I just thought, oh, well, let's try this. And, oh, man, I have, to, I have to go and find some more. So, as you can see, I've got some big, broad brush strokes on there. I do use that in the end. And, wow, I am so pleased I waited. So, bringing in uh, with a nice, fresh sponge, some, just some shapes, but another layer in a stronger hue and things just start now that's okay but I like how it pushed the other layers back I think adding a little more white or the neutral to it would have looked better but that's okay we can do that next that can be the next layer so now as you can see I have some of my horizontal stuff showing but I'm glad it's not all that way now I'm deciding on the direction of this collage piece. Hmm. What did I end up doing? Because that got covered up a lot. And that's okay, because it was a wonderful sacrifice. Ugh. Veiling. I don't know if I like to use that word, sacrifice. But see, as you can see, these colors work. And right there... Since it was closer to red, um, that's where it needed to be. So for now, that is a wonderful location. And I like how I cut it not straight, you know, it's, it's cut in different, different angles. And it has, oh, and it has a torn end rather than a crisp end. You see, you can really see those layers underneath. It sort of melts right in. I love it. Okay. Making sure I have enough because that doesn't really soak through and I don't want to smudge the um, 
probably slightly still wet um, yellow ochre. Okay, so then using a small piece down in the corner, in there somewhere, Yes. So see, it's such an extreme difference in size. They're diagonally across from each other, so it, it really works. It brings that eye around along with that yellow painted shape up in the upper right. Hmm. Okay. So I hope everyone, all of you, are enjoying this content and um, Onward Ho with a color exploration. Um, in the end, I'm really, really thinking the darker, richer tones are closer to this feeling that I'm looking for in this series. Uh, but if you caught not the last, uh, this Thursday's, uh, today's affirmation page, the one before, you won't, that was with the same colors. You know, some, you know, this is exciting to me. I don't know if it's exciting to you, but it in all lighter values, it's almost like compl a completely different color palette. I was just so amazed at how three different colors, along with white and black, can make such different paintings. It's it's I I just love it. <laughs> All right, so I just, I don't know, I needed a vertical large shape there. And then I find some more collage, a black and white piece that's very transparent, and some more of a neutral. And I do end up covering this, this open shape. I'm just trying to push myself in getting a, uh, getting to use different shapes. And of course, the diamondy stencil there that I, you saw earlier. See, that would, that would have worked all right. But you see, it's, it's, it's ruining this beautiful dark richness of the violet and the red, and there it is. So what I did with this piece, I left some of the red and I followed the curve of the paint, of course. Uh, you don't have to, but it just, it just felt good, so I did it. And it was so nice to have collage find a shape for me. So I was up there going, no, 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 no. I don't know what I was thinking. And I hope I did, because I have it here. I changed my mind the last minute and there, perfect. That's where it needs to go. Now, have you used a lot of red? See, I haven't, and I'm so enjoying getting used to, um, what's this one? This is... Uh, cadmium red, cadmium red deep. Very powerful. Oh, my other favorite red is magenta. And we all know how expensive magenta is, uh, especially golden. Oh, it's so beautiful. <clears throat> okay. Okay. So these have been sitting around a while. Um, I started to clean up my collage. I just wanted to deal with the collage itself and um, reorganize the colors, see what I have. And it's really good to go digging. And I found this piece. So this paper is, what's that? It's more opaque. I think it was just the deli paper. And I made this with some stencil on the jelly plate printer, um, layering it. And then when you use, diff you know, you, you use a really 
a, a nice neutral, you put it on, let it dry, and then you use another stencil on top. So I'm not liking how that, that angle is pointing in. Notice the eye stays right there and doesn't move. And I notice underneath, it just needs to be dark. To it just it it needed it. I sort of thought, well, you know, we need to do some different things. Now, as you notice, I the more black. See how I just went slowly, just to see, and it started to feel really good. And instead of going totally black, I went that beautiful dark red. Added a little right in that area just because it needed it. And this collage paper, working with the black, um, helped me just create an interesting shape down there without too much thinking. I, if I didn't put that collage piece there, I would never have thought of that. And you see how it has the relationship with the upper vertical piece, almost diagonally from it. So, and as I add this peachy color, and take away that sharp corner, it's feeling much better. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Just experimenting and realizing that, well, if I don't like it, I can cover it up. And I do. So this, oh no, it is there slightly, but I add a few more layers and I add a little more ochre, realizing that's better. Taking away the blue. And you see how this, this interesting shape is coming and climbing around those shapes? It is the coolest thing. I really, uh, I really like this new process of thinking about shape. And it's working for me. I hope it works for you. See the black and white piece in that upper corner? And now I know I need a circle. So this is cardstock. Um, and that's the circle. I don't even know what the proper name. Cure cut. I need to get some squares and some, maybe just some squares. We'll see what other shapes they have. But I don't like it too much just because circles are circles. That's you need. This is on cardstock and left over with the same colors. So I knew, oh yeah, these will go great. But I know I didn't, I didn't know how many circles to use. So I just kept cutting them out just to get some interesting combinations. Yeah, there it is. Cry cut. I took the, the plastic cover off of that. Because the shapes stay in there. I like an, if I'm going to cut a shape, I like it to pop right out and I don't have to go digging for it. So, I was going to do that and it just sort of, it covered up all of the nice stuff. So then I thought, oh, let's go vertical. That's sort of cool. But they were all conflicting. There was too many. This one had such interesting background just one was needed and not out. It needed to be on the side and it needed to be not a full circle. So I snip a section off the white because it's more of a flashlight there and we're overlapping. Love that. So it's tucked more to the side, which allows more space for the next step, the next layer. We're not done yet. There just needs to be more subtlety. There it is. The corrugated cardboard stencil. One of the best stencils for lines. And you could just see the spot, right? That's where it needed to go. So it's like a peachy uh, ochre, adding some more darker colors to go on the bottom. Oh, it works so nicely. As you can tell, I really enjoyed this piece. It was so different. 
and I didn't know where I was going. Coming from the brink to clarity. That's the motto for 2023. Clarity. All right, so we're drawing it up. And I don't know if you can notice, I think you can see a little bit of that mauve. It shows up more once I put the black in on the left above the red curvy piece. Now, for some reason, these rhombuses, checkers on an angle, whatever you want to call them, I put them in black in that bottom right hand corner and it just made the whole piece come together. At first I put in these dots, which are still, yeah, they're still showing, but they're now behind the layer. So I thought, well, I was going to stay down there. So I start there, nice fresh sponge, leaves a much crisper edge, if that's what you're going for, but stenciling you usually want to. And as I'm climbing up, I go one row at a time, trying to find the previous spot, and definitely one more. Yes, wow. And the top upper right-hand corner, since there's a lot more black, needs a little more black. So let's see what I do with this white. No. Nope changed my mind. Needs to dry a little bit more. That was that was a good move. Yeah. Oh yes. So that's another thing. So I real I see this interweaving possibility. As you can see that's the same stencil so I only want to put it in this side so it sort of carries on and around and makes that vertical those those horizontal vertical shape come forward and I add a little there which puts adds that little black corner so neat oh this is really amazing so I start with some light drops my spatters and they're okay they just they're not having the same effect so I see some black up there and I leave it very spontaneous and realize the black little spatters against the pink and orange look super. So let's see, do I wipe that dot? I think I do. And so we've got Similar collage papers diagonally across from both corner to corner and corner to corner. And then with some stenciling, finishing it up and pushing all of that backwards. I think I smudged something, so I just wanted to fix it up. <clears throat> and making sure everything's nice and dry. for the big reveal. Mm -hmm. So it's been fun exploring these three colors of cadmium red deep, yellow ochre, and cerulean um, with black and white. So if you haven't, join the Facebook group. Uh, please, uh, you're welcome. It's a private group, so it's safe. We are almost 700 members and um, so much to do, so much to do. So every Sunday, there's a studio Sunday. I'm also doing color with the group. And if you have any questions about color, please leave them in the comments or hop on over to the Facebook group and join us. And we are having fun. So let's, and, and that's the theme for February, color. And if you want to stick, you could use any, any three simple palette colors that you want, that you wish. 
and uh, share some of your work if you feel like it. You don't have to. So I noticed these final touches on this piece um, really help to come together more without overdoing it because you know I can I can go too crazy with that uh, some of that pink this, these are pastels and Posca markers and just bringing in some line oh and I know there's one line that I didn't do yes that was that was that pink again just emphasizing that and here it is. So um, enjoy exploration, exploring color series. And please like and share and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Stay tuned for some more color exploration.